Time is relative. Beauty is relative. Family is relative. <coughs> oh, I think I'm crying. Is this what the ghost pepper challenge feels like? everyone and happy James Day. I hope that you've only been thinking about me today, but not in that way. Today's book, Adult Lessons. It says on the front of the book that it's both written and illustrated by Gabby Hanna. Now in the case of many YouTuber books, there is a lot of ghostwriting that goes on behind the scenes. I genuinely believe that every single word and picture in this book was made by Gabby Hanna. Not exactly in a positive way, but we'll be getting onto that later in this video. I did take a look at the blurb before reading this book. I highlighted a few little things here, as you can see. Apparently Gabby Hanna is a brilliant new voice, profound with intellect internet slang. I wouldn't be surprised if this was written by a fucking dad, to be honest. You'll turn to the last page because you get her, and you'll return to the first page because she gets you. Most of the poems are about, oh, I'm sad. I like eating fast food. And whilst there are a couple that I thought were passable, I folded the pages of all of the ones that made me cringe. So there's quite a lot of problems here. <laughs> so I figured we'd just go through them one by one and hope that you survive this video. There's an error on uh, the first page of this book uh, because she's done a little illustration of a baby. But a baby isn't an adult Lessened, nor is it an adult. I've even written baby there. Making errors on the first page, you do love to see it. The first poem is an attempt to be self-aware. Ladies and gentlemen, come have a look. Here at last, another YouTuber book. Just what we needed, someone to produce. The tangible ego of a 20-something douche. I'm not sure if she expected to catch people like me out on the first page. Oh, she's self-aware. Oh, right, well, she doesn't deserve any criticism then, let's be real. But don't worry, Gabby, I kept going. I read all of the 250 pages here. Not that there was much to read, but we'll get onto that. Gabby Hannah likes the short, stinging poems. On page Page four, we have her poem, O Positive. I donated blood today. Feels good to finally be somebody's type. Oh. That's the kind of thing a 14 year old virgin would say. Like Gabby, no, you, you've had relationships. You are clearly someone's type. Probably not mine though, to be fair. Here we have a poem which takes up two pages and it's got a couple illustrations on it. Life sucks. Be grateful. You woke up this morning. That's the worst part. <laughs> Oh, it's good. It's because she wants it to be dead. The thing I dislike about poetry is that there's no telling someone what is a poem and what isn't. Uh, this is just a conversation that she's clearly had and gone, oh, that'll take up two pages of my book. And other pages she just takes up with little advice paragraphs. When I was little, I was the only person who couldn't do a cartwheel because I was too scared. So I tried and tried and guess what? I still can't do a cartwheel, but I gave it my best shot and it's okay to fail as long as you try. I mean, we've all heard about that phrase of throwing shit at a wall in the hope that it sticks, but I didn't think you'd do it to an actual page. Mr. Beast may have planted 20 million trees and it very much upsets me that a few thousand will have been used to print these. On page 17, we have a poem written by Gabby that she was really proud of. So proud, might I add, that she wrote an entire poem that she put before it about how good the next poem is. The next poem you're about to read is because it suddenly came to me. I hopped out of the shower soaking wet to write it down before I could forget. So I really hope you'd like it because I just lost my security deposit when I drenched my brand new carpet so you could read it and think, fam, this is lit. Oh, oh, that hurt. That really oh, I feel like my nose hairs have just burned off. Feels like I've just had some wasabi. Ah, <sighs> not looking forward to this one. So here I have some wasabi. I thought I'd remind myself just how bad eating this is. But you know what? I feel like we could be in a better set, really. It's a bit boring. There we go. And there we go. Oh, no, no. Haven't done anything that bad just yet. Oh. Ooh. Here we have some wasabi. Horseradish powder with real wasabi. Oh my god, it's not real wasabi, it's like a powder. Oh, oh I don't want to have to do that. I'm already crying. I have tears in my eyes. You can actually do lines of this stuff. Not that I'd recommend doing that. Look at how grim that looks. <coughs> Time is relative, beauty is relative, <coughs> family is relatives. Oh my god, I cannot even begin to. Uh, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing it. I don't think I'm going to read you out the poem that she's proud of, but I can spoil it for you. So she spends a good seven stanzas building up to this big reveal of, oh, oh my God, what if a stranger was someone that you used to know? It's apparently something worth losing your security deposit over. Oh, this next one. This is the reason why I've made Gabby Hanna the second episode of this series. I saw this poem on Twitter and I just couldn't believe my eyes. The balls Gabby Hanna must have to put this poem in a book and sell it to people. I'm just going to read it out. Time is relative. Beauty is relative. Family is relative. <coughs> Oh, I think I'm crying. Is this what the ghost pepper challenge feels like? Family is relative. <laughs> oh no, Gabby. Is it really taking Gabby this long to understand that some words have two meanings? Is she expecting everyone to put down this book and go, wow, I, that is, 
astonishing. Genius IQ. And on the next page, when I was young, my mum used to check if the iron was hot by touching it. And I don't know. I just feel like there's a metaphor in there somewhere. It's so lazy. None of these poems could have taken longer than 10 seconds to write. She's clearly just been told on a daily basis, come on, Gabby, you need to write a poem today. The deadline is it's fucking next week, Gabby. This one time, my dog did a poo in my shoe and I feel like there's something poetic about that. I can assure you, Gabby, there isn't. Here we have the most important philosophical question of all time. As you can see, the poem is titled of philosophy. If you eat an entire pizza by yourself in the woods and no one's around to see it, do the calories count? Yes. Again, we have another illustrated one that happens to take up two pages. If you could trade lives with anyone, who would it be? Marilyn Monroe. She's dead. I know. <laughs> well, at least it rhymed, I guess. But there's nothing more to it other than, oh, I wish I was dead. I'm not sure what audience you're trying to create here, Gabby, but it seems to me as if they might just be dead in a few years anyway. <laughs> like, what's the point? I don't want to read out any of these really long poems because I have a really short attention span. Oh, look, a bird. But there is one part of the poem Chivalry on page 52 that I really liked. I don't need to be taken care of, but it'd be cool to know you care. I'm a holographic Charizard, highly desired and rare. Yo, I even dropped Pokemon references because I'm fucking dope as shit. I'm pretty sure if you went to some random person in the street, there is an incredibly high chance that they'd know what a Charizard is. Your Pokemon reference is not dope. Where is the mention of my boy Lapras? Maybe the duality of Zigzagoon? Because realistically, Gabby, no one collects Pokemon cards anymore. We play the games! If we're not too busy playing Raid Shadow Legends. But speaking of Pokemon, she does a little poem about pets, you know, the Pokemon that are just a bit more boring. And as much as it reads like a nursery rhyme, it's somewhat got a little interesting message to it. I love all my pets. I love them so dearly. They're my best friends, truly, sincerely. All right, who the fuck invited Dr. Seuss? I'll keep getting pets even though I cry every time my cute little bestie dies. So yeah, that's not an awful poem, but then it has one which takes up another two pages. It's essentially just some drawn out spiel of information going off the last stanza here. Pets are weird. People getting pets are weird. Think about it. Oh my God, it is so weird that when a pet dies, we get another one. It's almost as if people like being accompanied by animals. I wouldn't know to be fair. I'm a sociopath. At some point in this book, Gabby gave up. She clearly wasn't motivated to write any more poems, but she knew that she had to fill a certain amount of pages for her book deal, and it leads to poems like this. I'm not joking when I say this, by the way. This is a poem, apparently. Sad is fine. It's like satisfied. If you took away the T and added a D, that's all there is to it. Poetry. I, I feel like I have to show you that is an actual poem in this book that she sold to people. And that's not the only one. On this one, she literally just wrote K. Can you see that? It's not a poem, Gabby. That's a text. I will give Gabby credit where it's due. Uh, I did like the poem LA, which is on page 98 and 99. You're not going to be buying this book, let's be real. It's about how one of her exes will feel every time they see rain. I'm not sure if she's just imposing that feeling on someone else when in fact they don't really care at all. I feel like it's an okay read and I quite like the illustrations on these pages. Uh, there's just like a load of drops plots of rain going over the words. It doesn't help though that we have this weird baby-esque uh, photo just kind of piercing through the page there. I'm not sure if you can see that. So you're trying to enjoy the poem and you get halfway through and there's just some freakish jump scare. Here we have a little poem which shines a light over Gabby's motives. All I've ever wanted is to make people happy and to get rich doing it and also fame, but only because that means I can make more people happy who would give me more money. Clearly someone who adores the art in writing poetry and selling it. She loves selling it. She loves selling all of this shit poetry. It wouldn't be art if you didn't sell it, let's be real. The only value is monetary value, obviously. Some of the illustrations that Gabby has drawn are an attempt to make the reader feel an emotion of some kind. So just over the poem which reads, ever notice that the word synonym doesn't have a synonym? There's an alarm clock that reads, fuck. Oh, that's a big scary rude word up there, boys. Is that how she felt when she realized that? I can imagine her just high out of her mind. Synonym doesn't have a synonym, fuck. And here we have a poem that she clearly wrote when she was very tired. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, better lock the door. Five, six, why the fuck are you taking demands from a nursery rhyme? Grow a backbone if you can't even stand up to a poem written for preschool, as you've no chance in the real world, start thinking for yourself, damn. Whoa, man, that's so edgy. Oh man, I just cut myself in this book. That's a big L for every children's writer out there. I can hear Michael Rosen from here. <laughs> nice. Oh, this next poem. I feel ashamed that we can even call this poetry, okay? Link. In bio. That's the poem. 
Okay, that's it. That's the that's potent. Really goes down well with a nice cup of bleach. You know, in English classes, we analyze poems that were written decades and even centuries ago. I wonder if people 200 years from now will have to analyze the poem, link in bio. And if they do, I hope that their resulting death is both short and painless. You know, I mentioned earlier that there are advice paragraphs. My favorite one is advice 17, which is towards the end of the book. It's pretty shocking that racism still exists. It's literally a matter of black and white. Like say you like kittens, you're gonna like kittens, whether it's a black kitten or a white kitten and I do not want to read any more of that, okay? A popular opinion here. Racism is bad. All right. Not many people are gonna be agreeing with that one. I'm gonna say it again. Racism is bad. Oh, God, what a dangerous thing for me to be saying. It's like saying the N-word. If I had one wish, it would be to never have a typo in a poem again. I've never felt this tired before. Tired of your shit, Gabby. All of these poems have such minimum value. They've clearly all stemmed from a thought that she's had in the shower or in the car. I mean, they remind me of Jaden Smith's Twitter and that does not deserve to be in a book which you sell to your fans. I saw a woman at a restaurant choke on her meal and collapse. I'll have what she's having. Sorry if your nan Dorothy died in an IHOP. Gabby Hanna saw that and went, ooh, relatable, death. <laughs> I also want that, ha <laughs> ha There's only so many times you can read someone say that they want to die without actually wanting to die yourself. I really struggled to read this the first time, let alone actually having to read it out in front of you. By the end of the book, she clearly just ran out of every idea under the sun to the point where she wrote into Google, oh, what other types of poems are there? His hand in my hair and his smile on my lips. This is gonna hurt. I bet you read that and didn't even realize that's a haiku, bitch. Now, Gabby, I'm gonna say this as nicely and honestly as I can, but bitch, that is not a haiku. The second line is meant to have seven syllables. It actually has six. And in the next stanza, the second line has eight syllables, so neither of them are haikus. Even on the next page where she attempts haikus again, uh, she does get the first stanza correct, but in the line where she asks herself, did I do this one right? That is the error in the second haiku. She actually does one syllable too many. What goes through your mind to think that selling this to your fans is the right thing to do when there's an entire poem, which is called filler, which reads, some of these poems were written because inspiration struck. Others were written because I had a deadline and needed to fill the pages. Can you guess which or which? That's not why you buy a book, okay? You don't buy a book to ask yourself, oh, did she actually care about this poem or is she only writing it because she wants the money? You know what? I really think the poem IDK, which reads, I don't know, you know, that was definitely one of her inspired poems. She even finishes with the poem, did you read this book cover to cover? Yes, unfortunately I did. Or did you skip around a bit? Did you share it with a friend or lover? No, but I am sharing it with hundreds of thousands of people. I have a feeling they're gonna love it. You better not have, make that bitch buy their own copy. I want a Lamborghini. That is the final line uh, of that book. Thank you for that, Gabby. If you ever wanted proof that she's only doing it for the money, here it is. My favorite has to be the relatives one. Time is relative, beauty is relative, family is relatives. Oh, it just hits different. Family is relatives. Mm. I feel like every rehab in the world should have that poem written all over the walls. It hits better than any drug you could ever have. So yeah, we've survived the second book of uh, Bad Book Club. If you want to go and watch the video I made about Lily Singh's book, then do go and watch that. And yeah, leave a comment down below if there's any books you want me to read for this series. I'll make a rule that if that book gets the top comment, then I'll definitely do it. And with that being said, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like down below. I need it. I suffered. Subscribe if you're new or have not done so already and I will catch you next time.